Theodore. He's a tugboat and a friendly tugboat too. A friendly tugboat too. Oh, Theodore likes to do the things that friendly tugboats do. Pushing and a pulling in the great big harbor in the great big world is so much fun. So many brand new things to discover. Waking with the sun, gotta get the job done. Oh, Theodore and Emily, Voda, Hank and George and the harbor master too. It seemed like Theodore and Hank were always thinking about the day when they'd be able to go to the wide open ocean beyond the harbor. That's when they'd have their own wonderful V words in bright golden letters, just like Emily the Vigorous, or George the Valiant, or Fodak the Vigilant. And of course, they were also thinking about what their V words might be. Wait, 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 wait. I hate to stop the episode right here, but what is up with that footage? Is anyone else not uncomfortable by the discoloration in these two shots? I'm sorry, but that is just really unsettling. Let's continue, shall we? Theodore knew it could be a while before either of them had learned enough to be given their own V-words. After all, the most important step before being awarded a V was knowing how to pull a ship. Theodore had pulled barges before, and they'd both done practice pulls with Emily, but neither of them had ever pulled any real ships by themselves. It was time for the morning meeting but none of the other tugs were there. Emily's still out on the ocean. She's supposed to be back very soon. George is towing Tex, the oil rig, down the coast. Oh, he won't be back for a few days. And Fodak, Fodak's busy moving ships anchored in the middle of the harbor. And again, I have complaints. First off, if the morning work meeting is starting, shouldn't all of the tugs be there? You can slide George and Emily because they have their ocean jobs. That's fine. But as for Fodok, docking ships in the middle of the harbor, hmm, funny, because it looks like he's just on another one of his safety patrols. Getting back to the story, a container ship named Julia is arriving soon, and there just so happens to be room for her at her favorite dock. But there are no tugs around to bring her in. Or so Theodore and Hank thought. Theodore, this is our big chance. You and I could bring in that cargo ship. Hank, said Theodore, I'm not a puller. Not yet, anyway. Well, you want to be one, don't you, Theodore? Replied Hank. Yes, but... And the dispatcher said just the other day that you were doing a great job pulling barges. I'm sure he'll let you try it. Come on, Theodore. Ask him. Ask him. What's all this about? Said the dispatcher suddenly. Theodore can pull, said Hank. He's been practicing a lot. The dispatcher turned to Theodore. Theodore, do you think you're ready to pull? Oh my, thought Theodore. What's Hank started this time? So Theodore and Hank head out to the mouth of the harbor to meet up with Julia. Theodore is a bit unsure of himself as he's never been in the tug and charge position before. But Hank still encourages him to at least try. As they arrive, Julia seems very unfriendly, which in turn has Theodore downing himself again. My name is Theodore, and this is my good friend Hank. We're here to take you to your favorite dock. Finally, Julia said, Fine. Pushers go to the back. Well, Hank and Theodore looked at each other, and then at Julia again. Oh, thank you, Julia, said Theodore, who always tried to be very polite. But I, uh, I'm your puller today. Well, Julia was not impressed. She thought Theodore was just a little tug. I've pulled before. And what have you pulled before? asked Julia. Uh, well, uh, barges, mostly, replied Theodore. Now, Julia wasn't sure that Theodore could be a puller, but she knew it was important to get the fresh vegetables she was carrying unloaded. And after all, it was her favorite dock that was open today. She looked way down again at the two tugboats. Well, I suppose I'll have to at least let you two try. <laughs> Hooray! shouted Hank. But I hope you won't make any mistakes, or I'll have to complain. Oh, yes, I, I understand, said Theodore bravely. 
But inside, he knew that if Julia complained, it was sure to hurt his chances of being given his V-word and being able to go out on the ocean. Sure, Julia. Just keep putting more pressure on Theodore. Like he doesn't have enough worries already. I can't be the only one here who honestly dislikes Julia at this point. Anyway, after Theodore and Hank begin their job, things seem to be going smoothly as Pearl arrives to check and see how the tugs are doing. And once again, Theodore begins to worry as Pearl watches him since everything has to be done perfectly when they're there. Theodore looked around. Hank was in position. Well, uh, everything's fine, I guess. We'll be there in no time, he said. Willie's Island in the middle of the harbor was just coming into view. You'd better start turning, Julia said to Theodore. The turn, the time, being the tug in charge, there's just so much to remember, Theodore thought. Theodore was getting closer and closer to Willie's Island. Turn, said Julia again. But this wasn't the way Theodore had practiced with Emily. They always turned a little closer to the island. That was because sometimes other ships were coming around the other way. Theodore knew he had to give them lots of room. Okay, first of all, Julia, shut the up. Who the hell is in charge here? Certainly not you. Just keep quiet and let Theodore do his job, please. Thank you. The two tugs began to swing around the island. Much too close, thought Julia. Just as they were rounding the bend, there was a ship heading towards them. Theodore tooted again, stop turning, and Hank tooted two times back to say yes. Well, it's a very good thing that Theodore had waited to turn just when he did. The two ships passed with just enough room to be safe. If he had turned any sooner, there might have been a terrible collision. Julia was silent. She must be wishing that Emily was here instead of me, thought Theodore sadly, and he moved on. As they went farther and farther, Theodore became sadder and sadder. By now, he was sure he'd never get to be a puller again. That's Emily Tootie, thought Theodore. She must be back from her trip. Now she could take over. Oh, that made Theodore feel much better. He looked up at Julia. You know, for a moment back there, Julia said, I thought all my vegetables might become a tossed salad. But you did turn at just the right time after all. Oh, so now you decide to stop being a bitch. Jesus, Julia. I can't even with her. But continuing, as Emily pulls up alongside Theodore, Theodore regains his composure and starts to believe that he can complete his job without her help. Hi, Theodore, said Emily. When did you get to be a puller, she asked. Uh, just now. I mean, today, Theodore said quietly. He was trying not to let Julia hear him. So he whispered to Emily, It's because there were no V-tugs around. I guess now that you're here, you should be the tug in charge. I think this tugboat is doing a fine job of pulling, said Julia. Well, Emily was very happy for her good friend Theodore. Of course he is, she said. Do you think this will mean I can be a V-tug, Emily? He asked. Someday, laughed Emily, and off she went. Hank and Theodore couldn't stop talking about their big job. And Julia's cargo was very important, Hank was saying. She was carrying carrots and lettuce and bags and bags of broccoli. How do you know? We're waiting. I'm restraining myself from complaining anymore. Can we just finish this all, please? You know, Theodore, interrupted Emily. If you were to get your V word for your job today, I know just what word it would be. What? asked Theodore. He knew Emily always could think of such great words. Theodore the vegetable, laughed Emily. Well, all the other tugs laughed too. And one by one, they went off to sleep. All except for Theodore. That night, he stayed awake a little while longer. He couldn't stop thinking about the next time he'd be the tug in charge here in the big harbor. And 
that concludes Theodore the Vegetable. This episode just rubs me the wrong way for so many reasons. When I first saw this, I originally thought it was good. As time went on, it kinda got a little boring. Now watching it again, it's just irritating. While I think it might have had a good intentional storyline, I personally don't like the way it turned out. I have one too many gripes with it, and that's not even with the ridiculous goofs I pointed out earlier. Not to mention, but the episode feels very out of place due to certain things mentioned in the earlier scenes. I can't take away the fact that Theodore's character, however, is very relatable to a small degree. Our newest character, Julia, however, if it wasn't obvious already, I don't like her, plain and simple. She's annoying, and her attitude just sucks regardless if her cargo was that important. I don't even care if she had a redeeming moment, I still don't like her. And I can't really say too much about the music in this episode. It's the same little things we've pretty much heard already. Other than that, all I have left to say is this is definitely another episode I can very much do without. Up next is The Day Ice Came to the Harbor. <laughs> 